All right, this is chapter one, lesson six and seven, adding and subtracting, unlike fractions and mixed numbers. So the first part of this is pretty uh, word heavy, so I just wrote out everything. So if you want to pause it, or I'm actually going to take a break and find a drink so you can copy it down. Okay. I guess I can narrate while you write down. So our central question, how do you add and subtract unlike fractions and mixed numbers? That's our big goal. And then the big part of the notes is just a reminder of how this works, which is that you cannot add or subtract unlike fractions without a common denominator. So first thing you do is rename it so that they have a common denominator. And then you add or subtract like we did earlier. So I'll give you a little bit more time. If you need more time, you can always just pause it, unless you're watching this live, and then I don't know if you can pause it. I'm a little bummed out. There's like 300 subscribers and only two people show up. Whatever. Never gonna get my silver button or whatever it's called. Okay, let's do some work. Hey, there we go. So this is all the notes. So everything else is just examples. So we're gonna start easy and work our way to progressively more obnoxiously difficult examples. So first one is just one sixth plus two thirds. Fairly straightforward, just two fractions with unlike denominators. So the very first thing we do is we rename our two fractions. So a common denominator between six and three is six. So one six doesn't actually change, but two thirds we would rewrite as or six, okay? Once we have common denominators, then we just add our numerators. We add our top number. So one plus four is five. So one six plus four six is five six. And that is, that's our answer. One down, four to go. All right, example two. Oh, this is example one. I didn't put one there. Oh, well. So we have four tenths. And now instead of two positives, we're going to have one positive and one negative. Okay. So first thing we need to do is we need to rename our fractions. And this guy did this a little bit differently, but I'm inclined to do whatever she told me to. So I'm going to say 10 is our common denominator. So 4 tenths will stay the same, but negative 1 fifths will become negative 2 tenths. All right? So we're adding, but we have 1 positive and 1 negative. So different signs we subtract. So we're going to subtract next. So 4 take away 2 is 2 out of 10. And then our last step is just to simplify. So, oh, no, that's right. And so two tenths is equivalent to one fifth. And that is our answer. Now, if it was me and I saw four tenths, we could actually simplify this before and make this two fifths. And then two fifths plus negative one fifths, you'd get the same answer. So you would just simplify at the beginning rather than the end. Right. What do we got next? Example three. So you have negative one fourth minus. 
3 8 so this is a mess because now we don't have common denominators and we have more negatives so we still start off the same way we rename our fractions to get that common denominator so between 4 and 8 they have 8 in common so 1 4 becomes 2 8 and 3 8 remains the same okay then we use KFC to rewrite our fractions because we don't want to subtract when we're dealing with negative numbers so we're going to keep negative 2 eighths the same we're going to flip minus 2 plus and then positive 3 eighths becomes negative 3 eighths okay so now we have common denominator and we have an addition problem so since we have the same sign, we can just add them together. So negative 2 plus negative 3 is just negative 5 over 8. All right, 3 down, 2 to go. This is about to get really bad, though. All right, example 4. I got a message. <sighs> Nothing good. Example four. So six and one fifth plus three and four tenths. So now we're dealing with mixed numbers with unlike denominators. So still, first step will always be to rename it. So one fifth and four tenths. We could actually do the same. This is like the same as number two, where we could simplify this one instead. But we're going to use tenths. So we're going to say this is six and two tenths plus three and four tenths. Okay. And then we're going to add them together. And let's see. We can actually we can make this look a little bit more like a regular addition problem by putting them lined up like this mm -hmm. so if we add our fractional part 2 tenths plus 4 tenths is 6 tenths and our whole number part 6 plus 3 is 9 and then we can before we leave we always want to simplify if we can so 6 tenths can simplify to 3 fifths that's not a good 3 I can do better 3 fifths and 9 as the whole number part. So if it's addition, not as bad. You just have to add the whole number separately. Sometimes you have to, to regroup if this is improper. That's not the case here. Oh, I ran out of paper. Hopefully you wrote smaller than I did. All right, example five. The last and the worst. So we have five. Oops, let me put a colon here. 5 and 3 eighths minus 2 and 11 20 fourths. No, not 20 fourths. I got ahead of myself. 11 twelfths. My bad. 11 twelfths. So this one's doubly bad because neither of our denominators are where they should be. So we still rename it. A little bit more involved to say what 8 and 12 have in common, but it works out to be 24, which I sort of gave away earlier when I made a typo. So this is going to be 5 and 9 24 minus 2 and 22 24 Okay. Now with subtraction, there's an extra thing you have to be mindful of, which is you can't take a bigger number away from a smaller number when you're dealing with fractions because you have to borrow and because we never really teach why borrowing works it becomes exceedingly difficult with subtraction so before we can do anything here the easiest thing or the simplest thing is to just change both numbers to improper fractions and that way we don't have to worry about borrowing because we're just going to have two fractions and underneath it, I didn't get a response back. 
this guy or she saw the Snapchat I sent her asking about it, but she did not respond. So I'm going to have to guess a little bit. It says use TX, but I think she meant to put plus and times. And I'm going to write, this is just exactly what she wrote. But if we want to change mixed numbers to improper fractions, which is why I think she put plus and times, is to do that, we can say what's 5 times 24, right? The whole number times the denominator, plus the numerator. And that gives us our new numerator. So 5 times 24 is 120, plus 9 more is 129 over 24. You can trust me on this. I worked it out. We do the same thing for our second uh, fraction here. So 2 times 24 plus 22. So that's 48 plus 20 is 70 over 24. And then we're subtracting. Now we could use KFC here, but we actually don't have to because none of the numbers are negative. This is just a standard regular old subtraction problem. So 129 minus 70 is just 59. And it's still over 24. So we just subtract it here. Subtract. Okay. So now this is an okay. This is not wrong. But generally, you don't want to leave your answers as improper fractions until you get to algebra. So we're going to change it back to mixed number. Okay, so depending on your knowledge of division uh, and multiplication, there's different ways you can do this. Like if you know your multiples of 24, you can go from there. Let's say we don't, right? We're not all pre-AP kids, bunch of nerds. So we can actually divide this out, top in, bottom out, and then say 24 goes into 59 how many times? So I guess you still kind of need to know it. Maybe you can guess and check, but this is 2. And then 2 times 24 is 48, and then we're left over with 11, and then we stop. Full stop. Do not continue. So there's no decimals here. We don't want a decimal. We want a fraction. So our answer, when we rewrite it, our whole number here is our whole number in the answer. Okay? Our remainder, what we stopped with, that becomes our numerator. And our denominator has not changed since the very beginning. Okay, so if you need to go from improper to mixed number, you can just divide, assuming you can't just do it in your head. Okay, so 5 and 3 eighths minus 2 and 11 twelfths is 2 and 11 20 fourths, which seems kind of coincidental because they look the same. That's, that's just an accident. That just happened. Okay, so that's it. This is not easy. I'm not going to lie. This takes some practice to get good at. It's actually one of the most difficult conceptual math things that we do all year. So if you're having trouble and you still think this doesn't make sense, it's okay. We just need to practice more. Okay? But that's it for the notes. Good job. Don't forget. Oh, I almost forgot. Don't forget. Hopefully you didn't turn it off already because I was just babbling. To put some questions over here. And then down at the bottom, your summary, like your summary can be, this is what it's like to add and subtract mixed numbers and improper fractions. Okay, that's it. Good job. Good night.